All right, greetings family. We're live on Revolutionary Camp. Family, yes, we are at Garvey Town, and I'm with uh, uh, two good brothers, two uh, co-founders, two of the uh, few co-founders of Garvey Town. Am I saying it right? Uh, uh, we're here with uh, Garadina Gamba and uh, Kweku Binsu. Bonsu. Bonsu. No, no, Bonsu. No, no, perfect Kweku Bonsu. Excellent. I well, appreciate um, you brothers, um, uh, this all uh, incredible work you've been doing with Garvey Town. Um, we have been traveling to Ghana since 2006 and been looking to connect. As a matter of fact, one of our first representation uh, here that we met with, I asked him to connect us with you guys in 2006. And uh, I don't know what their issue were, but um, I told him that I liked the project. Uh, when I first heard it around 2006, it was like a long time ago still. But I'm glad I was able to you know, get my brother David and my brother DC and a few other people to come and connect with you when we heard you were still here and everything. And, now we thought it was a great idea, I mean, the whole Garvey Town energy. So what we're going to do is go into some uh, Q&A for uh, the 28 of us that have committed um, to acquire plots uh, in the community, become members, and then the 100 plus other people that have great interests. So, um, Garadina, we have had a great presentation from you a few times. So to, to, what, what, what I want to do is us, uh, ask our brother uh, Kweku to give a nice introduction about himself and his background and then we'll go into some more questions. Well, um, I'm, I'm an activist and I'm a Pan-Africanist and um, my journey here started some 500 years ago and like all our journeys. In terms of Garvita, I'm not wanting to, it's a, it's a long story, so I'm not wanting to waste time telling you that story. Uh, Garadina and I, we met at our Saturday school, uh, Nubia African Community Foundation School, a school that we set up um, around about 1991. It was a brainchild of an elder called Dr. Femi Biko. And we met Garadina because Garadina brought his children to the school. I subsequently became president of the school at the time, and we, 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 we became close. But, this is not actually in the Garvey Town uh, history, but I think it's important to tell you because Gardin and I, we speak a lot. And our paths are quite similar. We had the same teacher, um, a man called Cecil Ross. Um, Gardin is my elder, so he met Cecil Ross a number of years before I did. It was a thing called the Two in Youth Project. And, um, I went to the Two New Project some years later, and this man was an, uh, uh, a Pan-Africanist and africated us about who we were as a people. Uh, Garadina's first child went to this school. My first child, first two children, they went to that same school. We didn't know this. We had this conversation just the other day. And so for me, our destinies, to me, was mapped out by our ancestors a long time ago. You know, sometimes you do things and you, you think is, 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 you're, is you're doing, but when you start to add up things, that's why mathematics, this is ironic. And we was talking about this yesterday. We went to Barbados in 2002. 2000, 2002 to an international conference for African and African descendants. It was in response to what happened at the Durban conference in 2001 against uh, um, xenophobia, etc. And at that conference, we were split up into different groups in the, after the preliminaries. And Siba uh, Garadina went into one group and they had a conversation about things and then when we came back from Barbados and was at the school, it was his duty to try and recruit people. Well, the people that he was working with, they all fell apart and then he brought the, the project to us. And we sat down as a school and things like that and all of the members came from the school, the founding members. And we said, right, boom. We could just do this thing at then. If, I, if, I, that we're going to, if, we, if we truly say that we're Pan Africanists and that we're Garveyites, then we must attempt to at least do what Garvey said we must do. And so, hence why we ended up here in Ghana. 
um, the rest is history and if you tap on the different things on the website you can get a lot more of that story it's been a long road and it hasn't been easy you know brother Bomani said um, he heard about it in 2006 and he don't know why he wasn't able to contact us but there's a old saying from, from the um, Caribbean you know Nothing before time. Nothing never done before time. <laughs> never done before time, time you know. Time now. Yeah? Because I'm ready. <laughs> Some people say, man a plan. But well, God a wife. Yeah, but God a plan different. But me say, man a plan. But the ancestors a plan different. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so, I think that the people them that has made that initial move, your 28 people, are serious garbiers. They're serious people. They're not talking. You know, and the last thing I'm going to say before I let my brother take over that when you're coming to Garvey Town to visit, to see what you want to do, have a vision in your mind of what you want to create. Because one of the issues that we've had with our brothers and sisters in Britain is that I think people want to come and see everything bill already yeah and then them come now yeah yeah more and buy that one the more and buy that one that's not community that's not communal we have attempted to revert to traditional African ideals that has not been affected by any foreign doctrine I want to be specific about that we have reverted to traditional African ideals. And one of those traditional African ideals has a saying. It says, I am because we are. And because we are, therefore I am. So there's not, Garvey Town don't belong to me. It don't belong to Garadina. It doesn't belong to the other founding members. It doesn't even belong to you because we don't deal with individualism it belongs to us and the family that has given us permission to do the project here um, one of the things the old man said um, to um, Garadina when um, there was an issue of why he was giving away so much land for so little money and he said, of all the people that have ever come for land from us, these are the only people that had a plan that involved us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You understand me? We're following Garvey. Yeah? And I follow Jesus and the man there and mm. them, Garvey, we are follow. <laughs> so we are, it's a we thing. So this. So when people come here and like them, them come here, they might see these few little buildings there, the school and that. And they think, so, so where's everything? No, 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 no. We're not millionaires. If we were millionaires, it would have all been built. No, we're just Africans who are returnee Africans. Um, poetically, in the year of return, we're talking, we're, we're, we're at this um, DVD here, yeah, who want to come back home because the West don't want us. Yeah? And we don't want them. So we want to come home. But we don't want to come home to lord it over our brothers and sisters and our children that is here. Because let me tell you something from now. We could have sold, when we sold our properties, we could have just get a local 10 acre yeah. and we could have built big house and swimming pool and we could have big jeep and drive around and say, yeah, yeah, me this. And all them things. We could have done all of that. <laughs> But we'd have been showing off on our people. No, no, we're not about that. Yeah? Because this project is not even about the 28 people them who sign up or the 100 who, who are come or anybody else. This is about those who's yet to come. Because that's the other African saying. Yeah? The land belong to those yet unborn. So we're just custodians. We're just looking after it for them coming. And I land on this. I read a book many years ago. It was called Bury Me at Wounded Knee. It was about the plight of the Native American 
when they came into contact with the Europeans. And there was a question that was asked in one of the chapters where they said, why did the Native Americans sign these treaties to give away land? And I was talking to a, um, a particular um, king. And he said, when the white man came to us and said he wanted to buy land and owned it, we laughed at him. <laughs> Because we know nobody owns the land. Nobody can own land. Land belongs to everybody. It even belongs to the ant and the termite. So if you're if you're looking to come here with a Eurocentric man, boy, more my piece of land thing, then Garvey Town is not for you. But if you're coming with the mindset that you want to help build a future for the generations to come, then Garvey Town is definitely for you. Yes. Tepe Eneke J.R. Senebe. Excellent. Uh, and uh, Garadina, I know you have given us introduction. It's a quick uh, background and also quick if you could just explain to people because um, uh, they hear the accent uh, you know, and just want to let them know. The accent right. and then the connection oh, with the accent. Connection. They, All right. they hear the Jamaican, they hear the, the, the UK accent. I'm an African kidnapped around about 1492. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in fact, my lineage, I was kidnapped in 1553 and put on a ship them called the Good Ship Jesus. Yeah? yeah? The captain was a man them called Reverend Jan Harkins who took our people to the island of Jamaica. See? We my mother, 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 father, 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 mama was captured and sold into enslavement in the parish of St. Thomas. And in 1828, my greater, 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 greater grandfather was purchased by a slave master. See? And taken to the parish of St. Anne's. See? Jamaica. Dumbarton. And that is my lineage. When my parents leave Jamaica in, a, in, a, in a, the early 60s and migrated to um, Britain, Brixton, Africa. So that's who I am. Excellent. Uh, what about you, Gardina? Born on Third Street, uh, spent the early part of my life in the cockpit country. Um, uh, went to England at age 12 um, and returned to Africa in 2004, 2003. Yeah, <clears throat> um, you know what I mean? And I'm old. I had a history. I got a father who is a maroon, um, even though he didn't um, uh, That's about it. Uh, so, people, people want to know uh, where's your parentage or family lineage from? Was it just like Quaker was explaining? Okay. It, yeah. Right. My mother is from Asinmans. Oh, wow. Um, I know for definite because that's where my grandmother's from, so <laughs> that's where she's from. Um, uh, my father, like I said, is a maroon. Um, originally from oh, maroon, Jamaican maroon, or Ghanaian maroon? No, uh, Jamaican maroon. Um, they, they, our family, were in Abak. That's the tribe. Um, hmm? All right, people. Um, uh, not a uh, large group of people. Uh, they were hunter gatherers in this area of Ghana before 1728. The last of us went to thing, and I am the last of the Nabak. Um, I'm the one who returned. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, share, share, share. Excellent. So both of you guys are co-founders. Uh, how much other co-founders you have all together? And if you just give the names, just real quick. Uh, uh, this Nicole Bristol, Kalima, Rashid, 
um, Lee Kojo and uh, Akimba Day. Akimba Day. Perfect. So all you guys have lived or lived in the UK. Yes. Right, excellent. All right, family. So we appreciate uh, the incredible introduction, and we're gonna continue with some uh, more Q and A.